Hello everyone and welcome to Moya Mix Hub. This is going to be the first part in a series of videos where we have a look at what a compressor attack time actually looks like. In this first video, we're going to be having a look at various compressors with various attack times and how the attack phase looks when it's carved into a 1kHz test tone block. Please feel free, as always, to like, share and subscribe as it's really appreciated. So let's go have a look. So here we are in the DAW, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play this banging tune that I've put together. Yeah, that's awesome, yeah? Okay, so it's a 1K test tone, it's normalized to 0 dB, and it's chopped into blocks. And if I just look at one of those, you can see it's just sine waves going up and down, and we'll be able to see the shape of the attack carved into this. So let's have a look at the compressor. It's the Logic built-in compressor, and the reason I'm going to use that is because it's purely digital, no saturation, no hidden anomalies, it's working purely on maths. So let's have a look at the settings. Minimum release, we don't need that. I've got attack set to zero at the moment, no makeup gain, two to one ratio, threshold at zero. I'll come back to the knee in a minute. And first of all, we're going to use peak mode. Right, let me show you first, without the compressor, look at the meters. Okay, it's a zero dB test tone, so we've got zero dB in the meters. That's what you'd expect. Put the compressor on with a zero dB threshold. Still zero dB in the meters, exactly what you'd expect. However, I said I'd come back to the knee, and if I turn the knee to soft knee, because the, the zero position is hard knee, we're now in soft knee. Watch the meters now. Yeah, and the needle here. We've got compression. Even though the threshold is set to zero, the signal is at zero, the soft knee will make the compressor start to compress before it gets to threshold, hence why we're seeing compression. So for this example, I'm going to keep the knee in hard knee because it's just easy to work the maths out and show you what's happening. So I'll stick that over to hard knee. I'm also going to keep it in peak mode for the initial test and I'll show you why. Okay, so if I now set minus 10 dB in there and I press play, we've now got 10 dB of signal above threshold. So the threshold's at minus 10, the signal's at zero, we've got 10 dB above there, two to one ratio, 10 divided by two is five, we should see five in the meters. Sure enough, there we go. So the maths are working perfectly there. Now if I set this to minus 20, let's see if the maths are still working. 20 dB above threshold, two to one ratio, we should have 10 in the meters now, minus 10. And there you go. Now, if I flick over onto RMS mode, with the same zero attack setting, and we reset the meters, you'll see we now we're back to zero dB. Peak mode just looks at the signal that's going above threshold. Instant transients uh, uh, grabs onto it straight away. RMS mode needs a little bit of time to calculate the RMS value. And the RMS value is how much energy is going above threshold over a certain period of time. And that period of time is specific to each compressor. So just keep that in mind. Let me now bounce these out for you. So I'll bounce peak out and we'll have a look at that. So zero milliseconds peak and zero milliseconds RMS. Okay, so they're both bounced out. Now get us to go and have a look. So we've got the peak one at the bottom, the RMS one at the top. And if we go in and have a look at one, you'll see the peak one did exactly what the meter said it would do. It shaved off the signal entirely. It's basically acting like a limiter, where it's just taking the signal uh, at 10 to 1 ratio in this case, at 2 to 1 ratio in this case, and shaving 10 dB off. Okay, however, on the 0 millisecond RMS value, you can see we have an attack time. This is the attack time. This curve here is the attack. It's not true zero in RMS mode. If we look here, we can see at the beginning there's nothing happening for these very first couple of uh, phases. And that's because it's calculating what the RMS value is and how to act upon it. I'll now bounce out a few examples of peak and RMS and we can compare them side by side. So here they are. So we've got the peak bounces on the left and the RMS bounces on the right. And you'll see it says adjusted here. Um, the reason for the adjustment is when you've got the compressor on peak mode at minus 20 threshold, you get um, a set amount of gain reduction overall. However, when you flick to RMS mode, you get slightly less gain reduction. So I've pulled the threshold down enough to give them a similar amount of overall gain reduction. Okay, and we can see we've got 0, 5, 10, 20, and 50. Okay, and if I grab all these, 
just pull them over here. You can see that the RMS attack times are longer than the peak attack times. For the same value, RMS is taking longer. And obviously at the zero one at the bottom there is, um, we don't have the true zero in RMS mode. You will also notice that the compressor doesn't wait before it does anything. It starts compressing straight away. So if we take 20 milliseconds for an example, the compressor doesn't wait 20 milliseconds and then start its compression. It starts compressing straight away. And the 20 milliseconds is the rate of change that the compressor gets to full compression. It's not necessarily the, it's not gonna be 20 milliseconds from no compression to full compression, because that all, all depends on how, first of all, how deep you're going into the compression. It also depends on what mode you're in, what compressor you've got. You'll notice later on, 20 milliseconds on one compressor is not the same as 20 milliseconds on another. They're all various values. So you have to take the 20 milliseconds with a pinch of salt, really. 20 milliseconds is the number the compressor uses to calculate its attack time. It doesn't equate to exactly 20 milliseconds. So if I dive in and have a look, and let's take this 20 millisecond one for an example, and um, let's calculate from here. Uh, we're at 31 there, so we need to go to 51 for 20 milliseconds, which is there. So that's 20 milliseconds. And as you can see, the compression cycle continues past the 20 milliseconds. Okay, so it's not physically 20 milliseconds that you're getting, it's 20 milliseconds used based on how how much compression's going on, what mode you're in, because the 20 millisecond RMS mode is even longer. So you just gotta bear these things in mind. Okay, so now we'll, we'll go and have a look at some classic compressors and see how their attack cycles compare to the digital one in Logic. What we've got here are our original bouncers, the RMS ones and the peak ones. And over to the right hand side, all this lot are some classic compressors like the 1176, the LA-2A, the SSL channel, that kind of thing. So let's first of all, let's have a look at these here where they've got a variation from slow or fast options. So first up is the 1176, which is this beast here. Everybody's probably familiar with that, where the buttons are on back to front, slow is to the uh, left and fast is to the right. And then we've got the Pro-C, which is a digital compressor from FabFilter and the SSL channel, which is selectable here for fast and slow. Okay, let's get rid of those and just go in and have a look at what we've got. So if I zoom in here, we can see that on the 1176, although it's a slow setting, it's not really slow. You know, this the 1176 slow setting is, is on par with this five millisecond attack. Uh, yeah, five millisecond attack from the Logic compressor. So even a slow setting on an 1176 is still fast. The fast setting on the 76 is pretty fast. It's not quite zero milliseconds, but it's it's getting on that way. I think the official figures for a for an 1176 is 800 microseconds on the slow setting, or one millisecond for the Waves version, I believe. Uh, but you can see one millisecond doesn't really mean one second in real life. It means more like five milliseconds. So bear that in mind. Uh, the Pro C, which is 0.5 milliseconds on the fast is probably what you'd expect it to be. It's left a little bit of the transient intact compared to the zero millisecond here. But one thing you will notice here, this is a 50 millisecond on this digital compressor, yet it's only the same as the 20 millisecond on the Logic. Okay, so again, the attack times are different, even digital to digital. So it all depends how the compressor's built. Um, on the SSL channel, mm, probably less than five seconds there on the fast setting, and the slow setting is very slow actually. If we compare it to this, um, well, it's probably looks like the peak shape. You, you'll notice with the shapes that the the peak attacks look a little bit more like a skateboard ramp, whereas the RMS type uh, shapes look a little bit more S shapey due to that little bit of time they need at the beginning. This looks a little bit like a peak value, but if we overlay it onto there, you'll see that it's actually quite a long attack time compared to that 50 millisecond peak one we've got there. So next up are these green ones here, which are fixed time attacks. You get what you get. Let's go have a look at those. The first one is the LA-2A, which is this one. People are familiar with that, used on bass, vocals, lots of things. Then we've got the DBX-160. This one, again, used on a lot of things, snare drums, even basses, yeah. Then we've got the Fairchild, again, what a very common one. This is used, uh, it's got a lot of saturation, a lot of tubes and valves, depending on which side of the ocean you're at, uh, and transformers, that sort of thing. 
Then we've got the V-Comp. Not used that often, I don't think. I don't think it's as common as the other ones, but it's still part of the Waves package, so we'll have a look at it. And the NI Supercharger, which is gets a lot of good reviews, actually, uh, from people, and it's the a native instrument compressor. So let's just get rid of them. And now, on the NI Supercharger, it has this punch mode, which is quite interesting. So let's just get rid of that. Let's go in and have a look. Okay, so as we can see, the LA-2A, its attack time is very similar to that, f what's that, f 10 milliseconds, isn't it? So 10, uh, yeah, I would say it's around 10. But it's also got a sort of gradual attack. The full compression doesn't come down here, so it's like a quick attack and then a slow attack. We've got the DBX, which is actually an RMS compressor. And if we go in and have a look, we can see the DBX here is not doing anything for the initial part, and then it starts starts its um, at attack cycle. And that, you could equate that to something like a 10 millisecond attack, I guess. Fairchild, very quick, less than five milliseconds. However, what you'll notice with the Fairchild is how it's distorted the waveform. That's the saturation that I mentioned. Okay, V-Comp, again, looks a little bit, uh, in fact, yeah, it looks, I mean, it looks like it's clipping a little bit there, to be honest, but um, it's looking like an RMS type compressor, and mm, I would say it's, you know, uh, along this five milliseconds RMS sort of time. And the supercharger, as I mentioned earlier, very fast on its normal open setting. Less than one millisecond, sort of in line with uh, somewhere between the fast and slow settings of the 1176. If you look at it, it's just leaving the very first transient in place, really. It's, so it's a super fast attack time out of the box. And the only option you've got to adjust the attack time is to hit the punch button, which then turns it into an extremely long attack time. If I just uh, shift that across there, you can see, I mean, I don't know what kind of attack time that is. It's maybe 200 milliseconds or 150 milliseconds or something. So if you need, if you didn't know what your punch button did on your NI supercharger, that's what it's doing, or that's one of the things it's doing. I don't know if it does anything else, but certainly for the attack time, that's what it does. Next, we've got these purple ones, which are what I call the bus compressors. The bus compressors are the uh, SSLG, the SSLG bus, which is very common. Lots of people have this on their stereo output. It's um, probably the most used stereo compressor in history, I would imagine. And the, we've got the Brainworks uh, Vertigo, which is the equivalent version of this with some extra features. And then I've also got the API 2500. And yes, I know this says 2600. It's a typo. I can't be asked to change it. Okay, let's just have a look at what those attacks look. Oh, let's just do the attacks first. The G bus and the Vertigo go from 0.1 milliseconds to 30 milliseconds. The API 2500 goes from 0.03 milliseconds to 30 milliseconds. So this is faster on its, on its fastest setting, okay? But is it? As we can see, it's not. Okay, we can see that the SSLG is extremely fast, same sort of speed as the 1176 on fast. And the slow setting, the 30 millisecond, is pretty much what you'd expect, about a 30 millisecond, same as the Logic Digital. The Vertigo is slightly faster. Even, even on the 30 millisecond, it's slightly faster. It's, um, it's almost zero milliseconds on its fastest attack. Even though it only says 0.1 milliseconds, it's almost zero. The API, on the other hand, which has got a 0.03 millisecond attack, is not as fast. And I suspect it's an RMS. This looks like an RMS shape, for example. But this, this looks like a peak shape, to be honest. If I just um, have a look here, and we um, just pull it out. You see, it doesn't, it doesn't really fit with any of this RMS shapes. It's more like there, sort of a 5 millisecond, 10 millisecond peak attack. And you will find this with some compressors. Depending on what setting you've got them on, they'll behave in different manners. For example, the 1176, we, I, I tested this on the 4 to 1 ratio, which is the most common ratio. But if you change the ratio, 20 to 1, all buttons in, etc., the attack times do change. So you've got to be aware of that. So how you, what you've got selected on your compressor will also affect how it responds. So and I suspect that's the same with the API. When you've got it on a fast attack, it behaves more like a peak compressor. When you've got it on a slow attack, it behaves more like an RMS compressor. And this RMS value is, yeah, it's probably, even though it says 30 milliseconds, it's probably more in line with the 50 millisecond from the, uh, from the logic. And finally, just a couple of other compressors, which are not really classic compressors. I just threw them in for the hell of it. 
Uh, we've got the Alicia Alpha, which is a digital compressor. And as you can see, on its fastest setting, it's pretty much zero. Or it looks like zero to me. And 50 milliseconds on there is probably what you'd expect, 50 milliseconds compared to the um, 30 milliseconds of the one above. And we've got the PSP Mix Presser 2, which has a fast or slow setting or then variable options. And as you can see, the fast setting uh, is probably 5, 10 milliseconds and 30 milliseconds there on the output. But you've got, you can speed it up by using the variable setting. So that was a bit of fun, really, just to have a look at what the compression cycle looked like physically. Because it's hard to, especially when you're new to compression, it's hard to understand what a compressor does. And the compressor is really, it's emphasizing, or if you get a fast enough compressor in peak mode, it's reducing the front end of the sound. Now, takeaways from this, what you should take away from this is that not all compressor settings are the same. 20 milliseconds on one could be 50 milliseconds on another. You know, it's it's... Don't think of it in those terms. Use your ears to set up the attack time. You can't really think from theory, I think, oh, I need a 20 millisecond attack here because unless you know your compressor specifically, that 20 milliseconds might mean nothing to you. Also, the takeaway to take from this is the fact that the compression cycle doesn't wait for a period of time. It starts straight away. It's, you could argue it actually starts earlier than straight away if you've got it on soft knee because it starts, it starts, it approaches the, um, the threshold. The next video, we're going to have a look in, on some real material, kick drum, bass, guitars, that sort of thing. So stick around and watch those. If you like the video, like it. If you didn't like it, send me chocolates instead. That'll be fine. And also subscribe. That'd be great. Um, but until then, you will see me in the next video. And thank you for watching. Until next time, all the best.